In this section of material, we're just going to get a little bit further into um, problem solving, more word problems. Uh, we're also going to be looking to see exactly how strong your algebra skills are progressing. Now, for the very first thing we're going to do is something that we've done in the past. This says substitute the given values into the given formula and solve for the unknown variable. The reason that we wanted to go through these was you know, not because it's something necessarily new. You have been um, evaluating expressions and equations in the past, but we wanted to go over some of the specific formulas that you would probably need later on. For instance, A equals BH is the area of a parallelogram. So just in case you need that for further reference, now let's go ahead and let's um, solve this for the unknown variable. Okay, well what I like to do first is to rewrite the actual formula. So I've rewritten A equals B times H. Now the B here means base and the H means height in this particular formula and A is your area. Let's look at what they've given us. They've told us that A is 45. Well we could replace A then with 45. They've also told us that B is 15, so we could replace B with 15. And now let's see what we have left. We have 45 equals 15 times H. Now we're supposed to solve for the unknown variable here, so we're solving for H. Now all of our algebra rules, everything that we've learned up to this point, still applies. So we need to get H alone, which means we're going to have to undo what's going on with it right now. Right now H is being multiplied by 15. So the opposite of that would be to divide by 15. And remember, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other also to keep it balanced. The 15 now will cancel out on the right hand side. 15 over 15 is 1. And we're left with 45 divided by 15 is 3 equals H. So our missing variable would be H and we found that to be 3. In the next problem it says A equals 1 half H times a big B plus a little b. This is the area formula for a trapezoid and in a trapezoid uh, it's a four-sided figure that's most of the time is drawn something like this. Uh, it's a four-sided figure which means it's a quadrilateral but we have two sides that are parallel to each other and only two sides parallel to each other. The parallel sides are called the bases. We have a longer base or a bigger base and then a smaller base or a shorter base. So this would be our capital B and the shorter one would be our lowercase b, smaller and larger. Now here again, and I'm sorry, H is always height and A is our area. So let's plug in what they've given us first. I'm rewriting the, the formula first so that I can start plugging things in. They told us that A was 60, so I'm going to replace that. They told us that capital B was 7, so my larger base is 7. And they told us that lowercase b is 3, so my smaller base is 3. Now the only thing I don't know here is H. So in this case I'm going to be solving for H. Let me rewrite this problem so that we can see it um, without all of the, the slash marks there. So now we have 60 equals 1 half times H times 7 plus 3. Well, order of operations says that we have to do the parentheses first. So that becomes 60 equals 1 half times H times 10. Now on the right hand side we have all multiplication. Multiplication, if you'll remember, is both commutative and associative. That means we can do it in any order we want to. It would be a lot easier to take half of 10 before we multiply to H. Half of 10 would be 5, so now we have 60 equals 5 times H. And continuing to solve for H, we would divide both sides by 5. So now we have 60 divided by 5 is 12. So we found that the height in this trapezoid has to be 12.